Today we are going to talk about finding the volume of composite figures. Composite means made up of multiple parts. Composite figures. So if I have a 3D composite figure, for example, I would have a uh, figure like this, four squares standing up tall, four cubes standing up tall, and then I have four cubes laying down. Now it could be six cubes or eight cubes or five cubes, whatever kind of works. But these are two separate figures, and then I put them together, And there I have a composite figure. Um, so it's not a full um, box-like figure like we're used to. Um, it's two box-like figures that we put together. Now to find the volume of a composite figure, I actually look in my drawing to see how I can break apart my figure. I find the volume of this, find the volume of this, and then add those together. Now, it doesn't always have to be the same way. I don't have to break it apart in the same way. For example, if I wanted, I could just slim, skim off that top part and find the volume of this and find the volume of this that goes on top and then add those together. So my composite figures can be broken up typically in several different ways and you get to decide how you want to do that. Before we get into that today, I want to go over a couple of review things, and that is about rectangles. We know already that when I have a rectangle and I have side measurements for that rectangle, the opposite side of my rectangle will always have the same measurement. Because this is 3, this will also be 3. Because this is 2, this also will be two. I continue on with my rectangles here. If this is three and one tenth, then this also will be three and one tenth. If this is five and a half, then this two will be five and a half. And so it goes. Here we've got 99 on one side, therefore this two will be 99. Because this is 44, that means that this across will also be 44. When we're dealing with rectangles, the opposite side will always have the same measurement. Now, that helps us a lot down here when I get to my composite figures. When I look at this composite figure, the first thing that I need to do is break it apart. We can see that there are two rectangles here that have been mushed together. Now, I could go ahead and make this one long rectangle and divide it right here. Or if I want, I can make the bottom part long and cut it off right here. No matter what, when I break my um, composite figure apart, I want to find the volume of each part and then add those parts together to get the volume of the whole figure. For today, I am going to go ahead and make my uh, break right here. So I've got volume A and I've got figure B. So I need to find the volume for figure A. And then I'll have to find the volume of figure B. Now for both of those, I do use the same formula. Volume equals length times width times height. Volume equals length times width times height. And now my, my figure has is just made of a bunch of different rectangles. So I need to go ahead and start by looking at figure A. Well, I already know that the height of figure A is 10. V equals 10. I can start that off right away. What I need to figure out is my length and my width. So I go ahead and notice that over here there are a lot more measurements. And then I can go ahead and highlight um, where my rectangles are. So I know that right here, this is two. And across from that on my rectangle is this measurement. And because this is two, then that means this is two. But this is the start of a new rectangle. And opposite of this side on this rectangle is right here. So since this is two, 
this is too, but this also starts a new rectangle, making the opposite of that right here, making that another two. And then we've got one more rectangle, making this a two as well. So all of these line up because they are rectangles. And since this is a two and I move my way up, this is also a two. A little bit trickier, but still an option is noticing that this entire thing is 12. I need to know though what this little part is and that little part alone. So I look across and I see that this is eight. So if that is eight, that means all of this little bit is also eight. Now if this entire thing is 12, and this section is eight, that leaves me with 12 minus eight, which is going to get me four. This little bitty bit is going to be four. Now again, I can go ahead and look, and because this is four, that means that this is four. And then that also means that opposite of that is also four. That allows me to find my length and my width of rectangle A. Now I could go ahead and multiply that all together. Four times two is eight times 10 is 80 inches cubed. So this one part of my composite figure, that rectangular prism is 80 inches cubed. Now I gotta fill out my volume for figure B. Again, I already know that my length is eight. My width, I already know is two. And here I know that my height is three. So I say, okay, four times two is 16 and I multiply that by three, getting me 48 inches cubed. So this rectangle here This one here is 48, whereas this one is 80. Now I'm not done because I don't want to know what the volume is separately. In fact, I want to go ahead and find the volume of A plus figure B, getting me 80 plus 48, adding those up and I will get 128 inches cubed for my entire figure. So I determine um, where I wanna put that break again. I could have done this break instead, so this would have been one long um, figure. No matter which way I break my figure apart, my answer should still be the same. The volume is not gonna change. It's still the amount, same amount of space. It's just where I break it up. Again, I find the volume of my first figure, I find the volume of my second, um, and then I add those up for a total volume.